There's nothing better than a cool SN95 Mustang, but is it possible to have yours too cool? Today, we're talking about thermostats. And welcome, I'm Darren and this is the SN95 Owner's Guide. This is the series where we cover everything that is SN95 Mustang, 5 liter V6 and beyond. As always, we begin with mailbag items. If you're new to the channel, I'd really like to welcome you and please ask that you stop down below, grab that subscribe button. We're trying to build the channel to a thousand subscribers and we really like to have you along for the ride. Typically we would feature a partner channel or another interesting series, but we don't have any new ones for today. However, if you've got an SN95 channel you would like to have featured, give me a shout out. Also, if you have an Instagram account where you cover Mustangs, especially SN95s, I'd be happy to give you a shout out and show your channel off and your feed to everyone out there in the SN95 world. That taken care of, let's move on to the main topic for today, and that is the engine coolant thermostat found in your Mustang. Now, usually we touch five liter stuff recently, but this is going to apply to the V6 owners, the five liter owners, and the 4.6 liter owners almost universally. So let's get into that. The engine thermostat is literally a heat controlled valve. It operates closed until it reaches a certain temperature and then it will open allowing coolant to flow past it. This will allow fresh coolant from the radiator to circulate through the hot engine and take away any of that destructive heat while allowing it to operate properly. Now, the factory thermostat in your Mustang is probably a 195 degree Fahrenheit piece and this is in there for mainly emissions reasons because a hot engine is a clean burning engine, at least as far as any smog testing was concerned to actually manufacture these cars back in 1994 to 1998. However, a 190 degree Fahrenheit engine coolant temperature isn't exactly the whole story because the thermostat is a reactive piece, so the engine must reach that temperature, then coolant will come in and begin to cool the engine down. Once the engine reaches 195 degrees Fahrenheit, it will snap shut and allow the engine to heat up again. So for us, looking for a few extra horsepower, that's not really the best way to go about business. And it's often thought, well, what can I do to make the engine cool more efficiently? Because cooler is faster to a limit anyway. One of the easiest ways to improve cooling is to change your thermostat from that 195 degree Fahrenheit piece. The most common performance piece you'll find is a 180 degree Fahrenheit thermostat and you can find this data usually stamped on the outside ring indicating when it opens. If you're unsure, you can also test it with a pot of boiling water and a thermometer. Next in line behind the 180 degree thermostat, you may find a 170, a 160, and some people even suggest running a thermostat delete where you completely remove it from the system and allow the water pump to flow at maximum velocity throughout its entire pumping range. The powertrain control module monitors the engine coolant temperature all the time and it makes a lot of very important and critical decisions off the values that it reads from that sensor. So it's very important for us to make sure that the temperature is working in line with what the computer expects to see and really needs to work. This what I've done is I've grabbed a couple of tables from Binary Editor. This is the tune from my own vehicle. And in these three tables, you can take a look at and you can see that there are some temperature references there. And you'll notice that there's a break point around 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Here we have the adaptive fuel table. You'll notice that it has a very interesting break point at 160. And then we take a look at idle versus ECT, engine coolant temperature. Notice there's again another break point at 160 degrees Fahrenheit, as well as our final table, our fuel open loop. Again, 160 is a very common value. So what does this mean? Well, at 160 degrees Fahrenheit or below, the engine will actually go back into open loop. That means it will stop referencing the oxygen sensors and other parts of the system that it uses to do accurate and concise fuel controlling. But is going into open loop a really big deal anyway? Because at wide open throttle, that's the normal operating condition. So why not go that way? Well, in a closed loop system, using the oxygen sensors, the computer is able to test, adjust, and trim your fuel in real time. It also is able to apply adaptive fuel strategies that it's learned over your operation of the car. That's right, in your area, your vehicle has learned what its atmospheric conditions are and you're operating to a limited degree and it has been able to trim and hone your fuel injection to suit your driving standards. So what happens when we're driving and we go back into that open loop mode, which is effectively cold start mode for the common terms? Well. 
fueling becomes less precise. Generally, you run rich, you'll experience higher rates of fuel consumption, your part throttle drivability will generally suffer, and I have noticed this myself. I have a 2003 SVT Lightning that had a 180 degree thermostat installed, and during the cold winter months when I was using it, it would occasionally trip a code indicating that it had gone back into open loop and fuel economy was terrible, about a 30 or 40% loss just cruising around in an annoying check engine light. Now your SN95 may not trigger a check engine light, but rest assured that if it's going in and out of closed loop as you're driving, it is not doing you any favors for driving enjoyment or fuel economy at all. So what's the best thermostat to run? I run and recommend a 180 degree Fahrenheit thermostat. This is a really good fits all. It will definitely get your engine coolant temps down and allow the system to work a little bit more efficiently. However, a 170 degree thermostat in certain places or climates may be the right suit for you. Because what you want to avoid is having an engine that overcools and dips below that 160 degree Fahrenheit threshold. And a 160 degree thermostat or no thermostat at all is going to overcool. So that's going to put you in and out of that open closed loop cycle and do you no favors at all. What about removing the thermostat entirely and just letting it flow all the time? Well, typically you might see an initial low coolant temperature during operation, but me and my channel partner, Sean McCann, we've uh, done some racing and we've also observed other people racing and we found that generally when you remove that thermostat and removing that restriction, the coolant tends to overcycle and it doesn't have enough dwell time either in the engine or the radiator to effectively shunt heat. What happens? Well, eventually you have a, you have a car that starts running rather cool and then as the races progress or as you drive along, it overheats, saturates, and you just cannot get that engine cool without shutting down. So that's something that you want to avoid for sure. If you're really set on running a thermostat delete, look at putting a restrictor in there, a flow restrictor. You can probably find them on the internet or get some specifications on how to build your own for circle track or other high speed, high duration activities. Key takeaways to summarize, the PCM references engine coolant temperature and it's important to keep that where it needs to be, otherwise your fuel injection won't work correctly. Number two, yeah, of course, update your thermostat, put in a little bit colder one, but remember, test and adjust for your climate and your use. You might be able to get away with a 170, you might really be best suited with a 180. Make sure you don't dip below that 160 degree Fahrenheit cooling threshold, that's super important. Biggest takeaway of this entire video. And number three, I appreciate that thermostats are not the most glamorous topic for us, but there's a lot of newcomers to the hobby and it's really important to educate them on everything that we've learned up to this point. We've had over 25 years to take a look at these vehicles and really learn, so it's important to share that again. But again, I would like to thank you for joining us and please like, share and subscribe and I will see you next time. Later.